All praise and glory to Allah and peace and blessings with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the Anbiya, Shuhada and Salihin, we're doing inshallah Surah Muzammir and Surah Madathir tonight, uh, chapter 73 and chapter 74, on page 163.3. Before we obviously begin with the Surah itself, it's, uh, it's interesting to note that this is the third set of verses revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the first set of verses we know are Iqra. Reading and writing became a divine ordainment. Education became the foundation of the new religion, of the new lifestyle that Allah had ordained. The first verses uh, focused on reading and writing. The next set of verses, or qalam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You know, it's amazing that the second set of verses uh, Allah actually, you know, gives that um, attention to the pen, you know, giving it that status of becoming the mighty tool that will rule the world, the pen. And in Surah Qalam, in those few verses, there's a lot of, you know, uh, motivation to Prophet Sallallahu not to doubt. So the first set of verses about education, the second set of verses is about the pen and, you know, not the motivation of not doubting. And this is at a time where Jahiliya reigns, where shirk is abundant. Islam is received only maybe 10, 15, 20 verses. And I always tell the kids and I always tell people, I say, you look at Islam, the first thing that was revealed wasn't Salah. It's just reading and writing. But now the third set of verses, we come to the actual Salah. It's there. So we read from verse 1. Ya ayyul muzzammil, O oh, you wrapped in a garment. Kumil layla illa qalila, rise or stand by night, but not all night. Half of it or a little less or a little more. And recite the Quran in slow measured rhythmic tones. Verses 1 to 4 now bring us to this idea of prayer and Quran. That the knowledge is important, the writing is important, but the Salah and the Quran are going to become fundamental. We'll talk about it a little more. But I just want to touch on, since this has been my year of science and I keep talking about science, and when I was doing the last talk on science in the night and the day, and I was looking at the verses, you know. And even when I read this, I see science recently. I don't know why, because Allah subhanahu wa tells the Prophet, verse 3, he says, Nisfahu, half of it. Awin kusminhu kalila, or a little less. Oh, is it Ali? A little more, you know. Yeah, it might not strike us now, but 1400 years ago, there was a full night, and there was a half a night, and there was a little more than half, and there was a little less than half. What does that mean? A little more than half, a little less than half, a quarter, two thirds. You know, it, it's almost like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have used any words. These are actually fractions. And when we look at this, and when we come to the laws of inheritance, because if you look at the laws of inheritance, if we sitting here today battle with it, I mean, those fractions are really uh, difficult. They're really intense. 1400 years ago, can you imagine those fractions? But again, maths, you know, this is actually, if you look at it, it's mathematical language. Half, a little less, a little more. And the whole idea of fractions, you know, when I was teaching fractions, we had to teach the people that one can be broken up into pieces. And you're already, the first set of verses, one has been broken up into pieces, mathematically speaking. Anyway, okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet, now is the third set of verses, stand by night. And we, you know, we know as Muslims we have to pray five times a day. But here Allah is saying the Prophet, rise by night, half of the night, and what? Ozid alayhi, waratili Quran taratila. Half your night in Salah and Quran. In Quran and contemplation, you know, read of the and and yet how many verses have been revealed? A handful of verses. You know, it just shows that intensity of these verses, contemplation, thinking, maybe something different. I don't know. And then verse five, Allah says, when you do this, when you you know get connected to me, 
the night itself, you know, it's, it's, it's that peaceful, tranquil time. Allah says, when you get to this contemplation and connection with me, in verse 5, Allah says, soon shall we send down to you a weighty message, a golden tequila, a heavy word, a heavy weighty message. But this is going to come after you are dedicated to me, after you are contemplating, after you are thinking, after you are praying, after you are connecting with me. And a very quiet time, at a time where you can focus. Truly the rising by night is most potent for governing the soul and most suitable for framing the word of prayer and praise. The, the, the night is so beautiful, so still, you know. Um, it's amazing that, you know, it, it's actually at night where you can actually, you know, there's no phone calls and nobody talking to you and, you know, things are calm. Although now at 12 o'clock at night we're getting, we're getting WhatsApp messages. <laughs> can't even sleep anymore. You know, night was meant, but still, the night is calm. Verse 7 goes on to emphasize this idea of why the night is so important. Verse 7, true, there is for you by day prolonged occupation with ordinary duties. In the kafir nahari, subhan tawila, you know, subhanallah, subhan, those to glorify or used, uh, you know, in terms of the, of the stars and the sun and the moon, the, the word subha is also used, you know, floating in space. You know, the day floats by. You are so busy. I'm opening the shop and next thing you know it, it's lunchtime and next thing you know it, it's, it's time to go home. The day just flies past. We're so busy, so, so intense activities taking place. And that's why the night is a time when we can, you know, really, truly, truly reflect and give that devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse 8, but keep in remembrance the name of your Lord and devote yourself to Him wholeheartedly. You know, you, uh, every our whole life should be trying to connect more and more with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the Lord of the East and the West. There is no God but Him. Take Him therefore to the dispose of your affairs and have patience with what they say and leave them with noble dignity. You know, people say a lot of funny, stupid things and we should be able to ignore those things that will, will um, divert us from what is really necessary for us to do, you know. Uh, I mean, at work, at, at home, there are certain things that are, you know, core things are easily lost by people saying silly things. You know, somebody can irritate you, somebody can say something really stupid. you got a core thing to focus on. I mean, even in businesses today, you know, the motive, business motives, don't let these small things come and divert you from the core thing. Because you've got a, a, a big plan ahead and don't let small things, and what are the small things? People say silly things. People say foolish things. And then, you know, what's the sense of getting caught up with it? And verse 11, Allah says, And leave me alone to deal with those in possession of the good, the good things of life, and yet deny the truth, and bear them with, bear with them for a little while. And I just found this interesting. And, and leave me. Wal mukathibina ulin ni'ma. Now, ulin ni'ma. Ni'ma, we know our favors and gifts of Allah. We talk of ulil albab, possessors of, of the doors that open the ways. These are the possessors of ni'mas. But the only way to become a possessor of the ni'mah is if the one who made these ni'mas give it to you. So Allah is saying, I gave these guys, I blessed them, and yet they reject me. Leave them and show them. You know, because ulil ni'mah is you're a possessor of ni'mah. But you can only get the possession from him who gives it to you. You know? Okay, we go on. Verse 14. One day the earth and the mountains will be violent commotion and the mountains will be as a heap of sand poured out and flowing down. Uh, you know, just from the beginning of the revelation, you know, especially in the starting, so much of emphasis is, plain, uh, is, is um, given to the day of judgment, the commotion of the heavens and the earth when mountains will be like dust. And this is a critical part of our faith. It's a critical part of our consciousness that the earth will shake, you know? You know, if, if somebody tells you, you know what? Um, somebody says, Zuma got away. <laughs> but if you compare that to the shaking of the earth and mountains becoming dust, you say, ah, so what? You know what I'm saying? What I'm just saying is that when we can look at the bigger, and the bigger picture is the day of judgment. The day of judgment is one of the biggest pictures you can get. Akhirah is Jannah, Jannah and day of judgment. 
and this day of reckoning, it's a terrible day. And the, the descriptions in the Quran are unbelievable. Scientifically also we've, we've learned, we've seen the movies, Riyaz, so it's going to be a, a catastrophic day. So when you compare to this person or that thing or that, I mean, you know, when you at work, there's so many things that divert you. And one of the key components of our Iman is the belief of this day of violent promotion. Yeah. Verse 15. And we have sent to you a man, a messenger, to be a witness concerning you, even as we sent a messenger to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh disobeyed the messenger, so we seized him with a heavy punishment. Then how shall you, if you deny God, guard yourself against a day that will make children hoary headed whereon the sky will be cleft asunder? His promised needs must be accomplished. So Allah is telling us that this is the same message from before. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi came just as Moses had come. And the people of Pharaoh were destroyed. Then Allah says, Inna hadihi tazkira. This is a reminder. Simple. Messengers come. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا Freedom of choice, freedom of will. This is a, free, this is a true freedom. It's for man sha, if you wish. Freedom to do what? This is whoever wishes. اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا Every day this should be our, 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 our object. Find a way to Allah. Go to Allah. Go to your Rabb. Find a way to keep connected to your Rabb, whichever way you can. Find this way. The whole idea of the remembrance and the reminders and the signs are all for you to get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To take Him as the only uh, God. To take Him as your only um, infatuation. All this is about you having, after seeing all this, freedom of choice, freedom of will. You want to follow, go to that path that takes you to Allah, or you want to do your own thing. Verse 20, verse 1, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet, he says, Kumil Layla. Kumil Layla. He took 19 verses and then he started doing it. <laughs> the, 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 the commands are. The, uh, the surrender, the submission of the Surah Allah is instantaneous. It takes 19 verses. Okay. It's just a figurative manner. But yes, Allah says, He tells me in verse 20, in verse 20, Allah says, Inna rabbaka ya'lamu annaka takuma. Allah knows you are standing. So it's already done. He's commanded it and it's done. And not only that, min thayyillayl, two thirds of the night, or half the night, or a third of the night. And so does a party of those with you. It's not only him. This is the amazing part. Those who are with him also did this. It wasn't just him alone. And that is the beauty of Islam and the Prophet that he had people around him that were inspired and as devoted as he was. There can be no comparison among them with the Rasul Sallallahu But they also did it. They also stood up in the prayer. No, and they got the big message, you see. Ali ma'allan tuhsuhu fataba alaykum faqra o ma ta yassara min al-Qur'an. So read of the Qur'an as much as me, easy for you. Allah knows there are some of you who are sick, um, ill health, others traveling to the land, seeking of Allah's bounty, yet others fighting in the cause of Allah. Read you therefore as much of the Qur'an as may be easy for you, and establish regular prayer and give regular charity. Read as much as, you know, you know when people get married, when you watch all these movies and see, when people get married, what do they say? When, you get, when they get married, what do they say? Through what? Through sickness and in health. <laughs> Unity. We're together in sickness and in health. I'm telling you, Quran must be in sickness and in health. When your leg is sore, read the Quran. When you are running, read the Quran. When you are busy at your business, read the Quran. When you're in jihad, read the Quran. When you're traveling, read the Quran. When you're at home, read the Quran. This is the fundamental divine word, which nothing can compare with. It has to be part of our daily lives. As much memorizing, reading, understanding, just reading sometimes. But there has to be the constant interaction with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And loan to Allah, a beautiful loan. And then Allah says this, whatever good you send forth for your souls, you shall find it in the presence of Allah. 
Whatever good you have sent forth, tajiduhu inna Allah. You will find it with Allah. How can you find it with Allah? How can you find it with Allah? You can only find it with Allah if Allah kept it. <laughs> Isn't it? You smile at someone and Allah loved that action so much, He said, I'm keeping it. I'm going to give it to him back. There are actions. Um, there's a, such a beautiful verse. It says, There's something Allah says, the good word raises to him. The good action raises to him. When he loves an action, he keeps it for you. So that all of us are going to meet Allah. When he loves those actions, he says, you will find it with him. You can only find it with him if he keeps it. Those are the actions you must be able to do. Selfless deeds. And he keeps them. And he waits for you to come. So that he can show you, see, I love this action. Yeah, better and greater in reward and seek ye the grace of Allah. For Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So Ramadathir. Come again. Again, oh, you wrapped in, a, in the mantle, in the garment, whatever it is. Now, we come to the second set of verses, uh, the next set of verses. We had Iqra, we had Noon Wal Qalam, uh, we had Yal Muzamil, and if you look at the, the Surah Makiya uh, in the chronological order number four. Now, we've got education, we've got the pen. That's going to become mightier than the sword. Actually, it's significantly good meaning there. And then we've got the salah and the night prayer to govern our soul. You know, we must emphasize this, that you can have all the education in the world. You can be a writer of note and people can follow you in drone, droves. But if you don't have control of yourself, then you yourself will lose that. And you yourself will crumble. And this is important, the governing of your own self. And that's where Salah and Quran comes in. Quran keeps you reminded of the day of the keeps reminding you who you are, where you come from. And Salah, putting your forehead on the ground, keeps making sure that you don't get duck off. It keeps making sure that you are, you know your place. Now that this has been established, now come find them. Stand, rise, and warn. Now, warning, you know, um, you know, sometimes I, people think I'm shouting them. <laughs> you know, people think I'm shouting them. And, and you know what? People say, ah, how can you say that? How can you say you can't go to Sun City? How can you say things like that? How can you say don't go for big weddings? What's wrong with you, you know? And, and I say, you know what? Okay, we'll keep shut. But really, you know, why, why does Allah tell the Prophet, Kum fa anzir? Warn. Warn is not something you say, um, please come early to school. Eh? If you don't come early, we're going to write a letter to your mother. Right? Nobody wants to say that. Warn them. No, come tell them. You know what I'm saying? Why? Come find them. Why, why, why is warning so important? Allah loves us. The Prophet loves humanity. Why a hard word like warn? And if you think about it, If, if we are now standing here outside, all of us standing here outside, we finish prayer with Jumma Salam, we're standing here outside, and there's somebody going across the road, and we see a car speeding from this side, and this guy, you know, young is on his phone, and he's walking, and there's a car speeding, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? We'll have frantic. We'll have people jumping, screaming, shouting. Why? To save him from disaster. So we warn and we scream and we shout for what? To save people from the fire of Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, he said, you are like fleas going into the fire and I am trying to pull you guys back. You are, you are going towards it. I'm trying to pull you back. There's nothing wrong with warning a person if it is to save him from calamity. There's nothing wrong with being straight and even being loud when necessary to save a person from the fire of Jahannam. And in today's world, we all have rights and you're not allowed to shout to anyone, you can't shout to kids in school. Now parents can't hit their children or 
You know, I mean, all this leaves people very vulnerable because the shouting and the, I shouldn't say shouting compared to warning, but the warnings are there to, as a preventative measure against some serious consequences. And your Lord do magnify, and I always say this, I've said it before, I'll say it again, you know, God bless you. you know, we're in a country of 2-3% of Muslims, the rest are not. We must learn to say God bless you. Every email now that I send out, I say, Ismail Sikandar, voice sender, God bless you. Why? I want that person to think of God. Wherever we get a chance, glorify God and cause His glorification. It's raining. You've got staff, you're walking, or you're working with people. Say, oh, wow, God is great. Wow, look at the water. God is merciful. we got to show people the power of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is Rabbaka Fakabdir. Get people to remember Allah. And get people to see Allah's power. That is something that we have to do all the time. With Yabaka Fatahir or Ruchs of Ahajur. Keep your garments free from stain. Keep away from all that is, uh, all that is, um, uh, you know, where Ruchs where it's, it's is anything that is uh, dirty, unclean, impure, where it words or actions or activities things that we see on TV and stuff, we need to start keeping away from this. Look at alcoholism and zina and it's, we must keep away from it. Fahjur, make a hijrah from it, you know. It's hard. Today's times is really hard. We are engulfed in a lot of things that are dirty, but they engulf us. And we need to make the hijrah. We need to, and when we say make the hijrah, push it away. We don't have to push ourselves away. Push it away. You have that power. Okay, verse 6. No expect in giving any increase. You know, one of the earlier surahs against it, this is the mentality of someone who wants to be close to Allah. Somebody who wants to be in the cause of Allah. You know, so often, you know, today, that idea of selfless nature, it seems to be lost. We live in, in, a, in a capital world. Everybody must be remunerated. If you do something, you must get something out of it. Uh, even when we do things in the path of Allah, we're trying to get benefit for Allah. You'll find in the whole country, you know, everybody is doing something, but ensuring that his organization gets a limelight or uh, he, he gets, he himself gets some limelight. You know, that, that's what the world has become to, so capitalistic, you know. Uh, we're more worried about the economics than the actual act, the actual person that's there. Like, you know, sometimes when we're doing hampers, sometimes I find, so, remember we should do hampers and then you try and get the best deal wherever you can. You know? I'm not saying you mustn't, we need any nature, we save a lot of money like that. But sometimes we become so focused on saving the money, we don't even know the person's name was getting the hamper. I had no idea who was that person. Our whole organization got no idea what that person about. We were so, I saved 20 grand, you know. You don't know who is that person. You don't know what's the nature of that person. Well, when you give freely, not wanting anything back, then Allah will get you that. Where you'll be able to find people. You'll be able to motivate people. So, do for the cause of Allah. Verse 7, But for your Lord's sake, be patient and constant. But for your Lord's sake. I don't know. And I didn't order the Arabic nightly. You know, in, in English we say, For God's sake. What do we say? For God's sake. Somebody, somebody says something silly. Somebody abuses you. I say, yeah, how could a guy say this? I say, for God's sake, have patience. <laughs> no, how, why must I have patience? What's the answer? For God's sake. Why God's sake? It's because Allah said, well, you're all big of us. For your Lord, be, Allah has told you to be patient, so be patient. You know, say, why must I be patient with this guy? These guys are idiots. Or these guys are they, they unfair. These people are like that. Only Rav Bikaf has been. Allah has asked you to be patient. That's why you must be patient. <laughs> you can make many excuses not to lose your patience. Whether it's with your wife, or your kids, or in the society. Only Rav Bikaf has been. For your Lord's sake, for God's sake, be patient. Uh, verse 11 to 14. Leave me alone. 
That says, Wadarni again, again, you know. This is the earliest part of Islam. There's nothing the Prophet can do. He cannot take things into his own hands. Allah says, Wadarni wa man khalaqatu wahida. Leave me alone to deal with the creature whom I created ban alone. Now, first step is when you are born into this world, what do you come with? Nothing. Do you have any bank balance? Do you have any possessions? Do you have anything of physical value? Absolutely nothing. You could be born into the very poorest of families or the richest families. But when you are born, nothing is on your name. Maybe the law will change on the <laughs> The law is crazy. Maybe in the womb they'll be writing things. But you are born with nothing. So Allah says, leave me to deal with the one I created pain alone. Then what happened? Well, جَأَلْتُ لَهُ مَالًا مَمْدُودًا To whom I granted resources in abundance. وَبَنِينَ شُهُودًا And sons to be by his side. To whom I made life smooth and comfortable. You know, you know, you know when life gets to that stage? It takes time to get to the stage, you know. Your house is paid off. You got a lack of car. You know, things are running smooth. Your income is good. You got a good life, you know. And, and today we sing that there's a very strong middle class, maybe higher class, middle upper, that you know, things are running smooth. Do you know what everyone in that bracket wants? Do you know what? When people are, they're a lack of car, lack of house. You know, you know what people in that level want? More. More. And the Allah says, marum. He hopes. We're not talking of a person who's violent in his love for wealth. This is normal people. Marum. Then he hopes. Tama means he hopes. What does he hope for? An Azid. He hopes for more. He's got some money. They're putting this investment, putting that investment, put it there, put it there, put it in Bitcoin, put it in Ethereum, <laughs> put it on the stuff. I'm not saying we shouldn't grow our wealth, but when we grow our wealth, there should be some social response. But Allah is just talking of this person whose life is surrounded, who becomes so comfortable that all he wants is that little bit more. The Prophet says, if man is such that you give him a mountain of gold, all he'll want is another one. Verse 6, by no means, for to our side he is refractory. Soon will I visit him with a mountain of calamities. And you know, when you look at this, 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 this state of, of ease, of plenty, and really, you know, comfortable. You know what? What cracks this place? You know, you find people in that category. Everything running smoothly. What destroys it all? You know what? From my own incident, what? Somebody gets cancer. Somebody's son is involved in drugs. Somebody got killed. Something happened. Investment failed. Somebody hit you. Somebody stole your money. Somebody conned you. Soon when I visit him, was a mountain of calamities. You know, you must understand that the hope, when things are running smooth, we shouldn't try it. We should carry on trying to earn more, but the hope is the mercy of Allah. The, the, hope shouldn't, the hope should be a better Muslim. The hope should be a better society. The hope should be to see a more equitable distribution in the society. Now that you are comfortable, make other people's lives comfortable. Don't get stuck in your own growth, in your own fears. Um, I'm going to skip out 19, you can ask questions, you don't have answers. Verse 32. Nay, verily, by the moon and by the night as it retreats, and by the dawn as it shines forth, this is but one of the mighty portents, a warning to mankind, to any of you that chooses to press forward or to follow behind. All these signs, you know, we talk of the day of judgment as such violent, but the, the sunrise is beautiful, the moon is beautiful. These are all portents, these are all signs. For what? When you see these things, when you recognize these things, again, freedom of choice, freedom of will. This is the true freedom that we have. The choice to go towards Allah. And here, freedom to, to do what? To choose to go forward or to fall behind. You've seen the moon 
And it's so beautiful. She says, Subhanallah, what a beautiful moon. The next day, did you, did you do something? Did you do something to go forward in the sight of Allah? Did you do those deeds, little extra, that Allah says, you will find it with me? Did you go forward? Did you take a small baby step forward? Did you inch forward? Or did you fall behind? Did you stay behind? Uh, verse 40 to 48. The people of Jannah, they will question each other and they will ask for the sinners. Anil Mujrimin, what led you into the al -fire? And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often takes, takes us to the people of al -fire, takes us to the Akhirah, and through personification of those who are supposed to be there, gives us the reason. So he says, what led you into the al -fire? They will say, You are not of those of the Musalli. Now we were those, not even miskin, we were feeding the poor. No, but we used to talk a lot of nonsense. We used to talk a lot of things that have no real value. And we used to deny the day of judgment until they came to us the hour that is certain. Then no, well, no intercession of any intercessors profit them. Then, sorry, we'll stop there. So again, you know, the people of hell, these are the attributes. They are negligent of salah, negligent of social responsibility, getting caught up in vanities, getting caught up in frivolities, things that have no real value. And many a time you'll find that these are frivolities, the, the nonsensical stuff that will actually keep us back from interacting with the poor, to keep us back from our salah, you know, talking nonsense and getting um, bogged down into um, discussing things that have no value actually are a detriment, an impediment to us getting closer to Allah um, So we should be, you know, conscious of that. Verse 49, Allah subhanahu gives such a beautiful, he says, then what is the matter with them that they turn away from admonition as if they were frightened asses fleeing from a lion? You know, it's just such a beautiful description, you know. Unfortunately, during today's time, you know, the Quran is so clear, the Quran is so easy, the Quran has not, everything is good in there. And if you listen to Quran, it can only make you a better human being. And yet, the Quraysh, when they heard the Quran, they were like shaking. They were running, you know. They, they were so scared. But yet, if you read it, it's anything to be fearful of. No. But, you know, and this brings me to that, you know, um, I remember, what's his name? Uh, this guy who was, who knows Bible and Quran. Zakir. Zakir Naik, you know. And he said something so nice once. He, he said, talks of terror. He said, let me explain you terrorists. And he says, do you know that for a criminal, a police is like a terrorist? Because when he sees a police, when a criminal sees a police, he feels terror. So these people, they were seeing terror in the Quran, the police. Because they were criminals. And criminals will feel terrorized and run away like lions from this. For those who are sincere, they'll find the Quran and they run to it. And we've seen so many people running from the Quran. And Alhamdulillah, we're seeing in the world a change going towards the Quran, but still far from what, what it should be. And the Quran is so uh, critical that we're discussing all this time. Verse 55, uh, verse 54 to 56. In the, Nay, this is in the heart Just a reminder. This is a reminder. You are free, free to remember if you want to. Allah, but none will keep it in remembrance except us. Allah was. He is the Lord of righteousness and the Lord of forgiveness. We have that freedom. Our freedoms of choice, which we can choose to find a path to Allah or not to choose a path to Allah. We have that freedom of choice to be those who are going forward forward in every good deed or we could lag behind. We are free to remember Allah or not to remember Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. As-salamu alaykum. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.